Hello, and welcome to the Inside EVs podcast for July the 30th, 2021. This is episode number 69. Our top stories today, Tesla records a record profit, faces some challenges, for an F-150 Lightning range and reservations, Chevy Bolt EV recalled again. I'm Dominic Yoni, Inside EV's forum moderator and Inside EV's editor. Joining us today is the highly distinguished Tom Malogny, Inside EV's editor and host of the YouTube channel, State of Charge with Tom Malogny. We also have the magnanimous Mr. Martin Lee from the EV News Daily podcast, available on all your usual podcast platforms. And of course, Kyle Connor joins us from Out of Spec Studios. He also puts together blockbuster videos of epic proportions for the Inside EV's YouTube channel. All right. So before we get going, I would like to ask you uh, to please subscribe to this show on whatever platform you're watching on. And if you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, please ring that uh, bell icon for notifications. All right. Um, so welcome, everybody. Uh, let's see what's we've been driving this week. Um, Kyle, let's see who we want to talk to about first. Uh, Kyle, yeah, do you want to talk about uh, your adventures at in Oregon? Yeah, so um, driven quite a few EVs this week oh, and really? had a blast, yeah. But the biggest and most important and exciting one was uh, last minute made a decision to go up to the Archimoto friends and family gathering. Um, so oh, went up there to Portland and, you know, there was like, I don't know, 150, 200 owners, enthusiasts, investors all came to Portland International Raceway and to experience the FUV. They officially debuted the Archimoto Roadster at this event. Oh, nice. uh, they showcased some specialized projects like a pickup truck version, which I'm really into. And it has a bed that actually expands width wise. So it's narrow when you don't need a wide bed and then it gets wider. And then, uh, you know, we're in Portland, their factory and all of their facilities are down in Eugene. It's only about 110 miles south. And I was talking to Mark, who's the CEO of the company. I said, you know, dude, we should go take a road trip in one of these things. And I had uh, Lexi with me who runs out of specs marketing team. It was her first like understanding of what we do in the real world when we're out filming videos. So I'm like, oh, Lexi's got to come out and film a road trip with me. So yeah, we grabbed this orange Archimoto FUV. We went up actually the opposite direction into Washington, uh, hung around uh, Southern Washington for a little while. Then we went over to the coast, down the coast, and then over to Eugene. The problem was, well, the yeah, Archimoto yeah. is very comfortable, I have to say, okay. but, but there is a problem, which was only about, I don't know, maybe 70% of the way through uh, onto our first leg. So while we were already committed to this route, uh, did I realize that the range wasn't as good as I had calculated? And <laughs> uh -oh. then I got to the charger and it charged a lot slower than I had thought to. So I was thinking it had a seven kilowatt onboard charger. And I got it, must have got it confused in my head with the zero motorcycles that we have that have a seven kilowatt onboard charger or right. 7.2, because this was only a 3.6 kilowatt onboard charger. And right. then I'm like, oh, it's six hours to fully charge this thing. And we just committed to a 300 mile road trip. So then we just went on the road trip. We, you know, a lot of, lot of hanging out at chargers, a lot of uh, seeing breweries. Honestly, it was a great adventure. We had fun. We went down the coastline. I've never been to the Oregon coast. And I uh, got to say, unit, unit was comfortable. It Rec was um, a lot of weird people, to be honest. <laughs> All right. Sounds like my kind of place. <laughs> Maybe you would fit in. Yeah. I mean, the, the views were amazing, but... Um, yeah, that definitely was a cool place to go. Glad glad I checked that off the list. Right on. So you drove the regular three wheeler, and you you shared one together. You did the tandem seating. Right, we did tandem seating. Lexi drove a fair portion of it, and okay. uh, we have a whole out of spec motoring uh, video coming up on this. Uh, really fun. Met tons of people who were interested in the Archimoto. Have to say, no, uh, no issues with the unit. No fault codes. If you guys remember when we had the blue and red one, it broke down on us four times during our uh, week or, or I should say month of month plus of testing. 
here in Colorado and it wasn't the best experience. So this right. was a great revisit and uh, serious improvements uh, even from those early days. So I'm excited to see the improvement continue. There's definitely a lot of room for it. Um, yeah, a lot of room for improvement. But, you know, if you just look at it as a fun machine to get around, sure, yeah, we had a blast. A lot of giggles, a lot of smiles. Hey, did you get to, uh, did you see the one that they had they about the Tilting Cycle Workers something company? So they have one that tilts now. And they have, yes. that, I believe that was at the track? Yes. It, you, it, they did, it doesn't sound like they're going to do anything with it. I was asking them, you know, when is this going to make it to Roadster? When is this going to make it to FUV? And they were kind of like, it's not really for that platform and not anytime soon. So okay. I'm not sure what their plans are for it in the future. I tried asking. Uh, they were being very secretive about okay. what they plan to use the technology for. But what I did come away with is it sounds like the existing products won't tilt at least and not right. in the immediate plans. Right. It sounds like a, if they do a tilting, it'll be on a separate platform and like a new new platform. New platform, new idea. That would be my guess. Sure. Uh, and who knows? They may continue to operate Tilting Motorworks to, you know, outfit Harleys and whatever else to do this tilting thing. I have to say, I've never seen one in the real world. I checked it out, got to, you know, play around with it, move the bikes around on the hydraulics. Pretty cool technology. Really uh, thought that was pretty neat. At the end of the day, though, uh, no one's going to put that on their motorcycle unless they're mobility challenged, because why wouldn't you just ride a normal motorcycle, uh, which is more free and more fun. Right. So yeah, well, this is right. this is for people who are uh, unable to put their feet down at a stoplight or. Sure. But there's I more of those people really, around. I mean, especially the Har Harley owner owner you know sure there's plenty of people out. around absolutely and they they'll have a solid business plan right. but uh business model i should say but yeah i i don't know didn't di i personally didn't spend too much time focusing on that i really wanted to see did the fuv improve and i got to ride the roadster as well and um the the fuv is improving and i was right. pleased with that how was the roadster f feeling well it's just pretty much like the other one or no very different you sit another like six inches higher so you're really high up on this thing, which is an awkward feeling. It's not a feeling of sporty riding. Uh, it was uh -huh. like a very odd seating position, if I'm totally honest. It had a cubby up front, so you could at least put your stuff somewhere. That was nice. Uh, okay. The other ones we've learned, you only have the storage in the back, which got annoying because we always had to open the back. And uh, throttle response was way nicer on the road. So I think it just had the next iteration of firmware and okay. big, big difference there. Um, yeah, still, still needs like ABS, instability control, and and very basic safety things. That's the one that we had in Colorado, that blue and red one. The one right. to the right of it, if you're watching on YouTube, is actually has a camera gimbal mount on the rear uh, for filming vehicles, which is honestly perfect for what we would do. If we had to get an Archimoto, I would get it just like that red one there right. uh, because you can film off the back, which would make it so much easier to film cars. Can can you remove that so have it, you have it like a little pickup trucky thing? I don't believe on that one. I, and that's a okay. one of one off thing. Right. right. Um, but they said they would make us one if we wanted okay. it. Okay. So we got to see if we want it. <laughs> right. All right. Um, so, Tom, um, see, last week, uh, I don't, you, you drive anything new this week? Well, first, I want to ask Kyle a question. Kyle, you said that oh, yeah. the um, range on the Arca motor wasn't as good as you had expected, but you didn't say what that range is. How far? Yeah, because I don't really know. <laughs> it's hard you to say. Like three hundred miles. How do you not know? Well, you're not charging it up to hundred percent every time. Eighty-seven <laughs> percent is when it would taper off of peak charging rate of three point six kilowatts. So I would leave at eighty-seven percent and then bring it down to zero. Um, okay. It was well, roughly, honestly, it was how far it would go about fifty miles at fifty miles an hour. Okay, that's a good okay. estimate. Cool. I would think. And I think ours, we could only put 11.3 kilowatt hours into the pack, zero to full, and it's supposed to be a 19 point something kilowatt hour pack. So I don't know if we were getting one of the modules wasn't working or something, yeah. but we were for sure. Efficiency. Yeah, for sure burning more juice than I did in the middle of winter with the blue and red one. And then towards the end of the trip, like coming into Eugene, it started to, uh, my perception was open up and we weren't burning as much juice and like something had changed where at the beginning of the trip, we just shredded the electrons and then it got more efficient, but same temperature, same driving style. I uh, couldn't figure out what it was, 
But um, at the end of the day, we made it just a lot of plugging in and a lot of setting net chargers. Yeah. So if okay. they if they just make a simple addition to that unit, I've already talked to them and they're going to look into it of adding a faster onboard charger, even, you know, going up to a 6.6 .6 kilowatt unit or 7.2 kilowatt unit, it would make a world of difference, a world of difference. Uh, yeah. and, and forget low power DC without liquid cooling on the battery pack. But um, yeah, that was just, I think that's like the biggest thing it needs is just a faster onboard charger. But keep in mind, it's meant to be a commuter. When you go from 100% every day and you're driving to work, it's got plenty of range for everything you need to bomb around the city. I believe that. And um, sounds like it's even going to get a bit spicier off the line, which I'm looking forward to. So could always use more performance. Yeah, I mean, it's already pretty yeah. nippy off the line. Well, it's okay. Right. But it's like I mean, I'm that, wide open throttle every time from zero. I mean, that's just the natural reaction is to go wide open. And cars still pull away from you at the lights when you floor it. I mean, it's not it's not snappy right. off the line. It picks up at 40. But Once open, you hit 40 miles like an hour, it then the power goes all the way. And it's quick when you get all the power out. Uh, but it sounds like they're working on software with all this stuff. And we'll see. We'll see. A uh, lot of room for improvement, like I said. But I think they have the bones uh, of it kind of figured out now or at least as much as you can figure out for a three-wheeled device right hey tom where are you <laughs> yeah so i see one of the um uh one of the, the followers uh, asked where i am i'm actually on vacation this week i'm up in newburyport massachusetts at a friend's house um i'm in uh our friend's uh, seven-year-old son preston's bedroom and preston absolutely <laughs> loves the beach buggy he was just shredding i can't believe how quickly kids can pick video games up you know i don't have any kids so i haven't really experienced that but man he went from like not knowing how to even use it to be coming in first place in every race and just constantly breaking the track record in like an hour it's amazing but i couldn't so get he, him out of my model three yesterday all he did was play beach <laughs> the beach buggy but it was it was pretty cool um so yeah i'm i'm, I'm on vacation and uh Check it in with the podcast. There's nothing that could stop us from bringing the world of EVs to the Inside EVs community. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I, you asked me what I was driving. Nothing new other than the Jeep. We talked a little bit about the Jeep 4xe last week. Um, I did yeah. the 70 mile an hour range test with that. Um, and then this week I put up a uh, just an overall driving impressions first drive review video on Inside EVs where I went over um, what I tried to do was really zero in on the electric bits of the Jeep 4 by a I didn't do a, you know, a deep review and take it off-roading and I'll leave that to Kyle and, and you know, go through rivers and stuff like that. I, I really just focused on, okay, what, what, what are the electric bits and did Jeep do these well? Uh, I talked about regenerative braking, the different drive modes, um, all the charging, the, the things that make this Jeep electric. And we got that video up on Inside EVs if anyone's interested in watching it. Right on. Hey, um, yeah, I watched that actually, and I, I liked it. I thought you did a great job. And so if you're interested at all in the Jeep Wrangler 4xe, definitely go to the Inside EVs YouTube channel and check that out. Um, and you also did the write-up for that too, so that's on the site. Uh, so, but last week you told us about you got to see the F-150 Lightning uh, in person and talk to Darren there at uh, the electric electrification boss at Ford. And you told us... Uh, you, there were some screens. They had taken the the range, actual range, off the screen, so it wasn't really visible. But then you had, but you did actually see a number that was buried in like a sub menu or something, and you weren't going to talk about that. And to, but you, I think you maybe you got some permission to 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 do that. And so you shared an article this week on Inside EVs uh, about how much range possibly it could have. And we're looking at the thumbnail clip here on on the screen if you're watching this on YouTube or Twitch almost 500 miles of range is that so what's going on there man so yeah i i went last week's podcast i had just gotten home from detroit and and uh, uh i was still going through all my pictures and video that i that i took i'm going to be putting a a video up on inside ev soon i just i have so many video clips it's going to take me a while to edit it so the interesting thing is ford uh if you look at the main drivers display and even in the center stack you don't see anything that tells you how uh, you're the driving range. And I'm sure Ford has pulled that because they, they kind of want to um, let that build up. And 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 then bef right before maybe the release, 
They'll talk more about it. Right now, the company line is with the standard battery pack. It's They're shooting for an EPA range rating of 230 miles per charge. With the extended range battery pack, they're shooting for 300 miles per charge. And that's all they'll comment on that. But about two months ago, um, the, that popular um, tech YouTuber, Marquise Brownlee, did a video. Um, and he said that his car, his truck, showed that it had 367 miles of range in that same sub menu that I went into. His was, he had the main um, the, the range estimate was removed from the main uh, driver's display also, as it is on all these pre-production F-150s. Um, and he said that Ford actually told him that, yeah, that the, the range estimates that we're shooting for, 230 and 300, that's with a 1,000 pounds of payload. So without ca carrying any payload, the truck's going to go further. Um, and that caused a lot of controversy. And, and Ford really will not comment on this. I, I know a lot of other journalists that will reach out to them said, hey, you know, you know, right. did, you know, did you tell this to Marquise Brownlee? Like, you're not telling us this, um, but, you know, be fair. If, if you're telling it to one, you know, member of the media, you should tell it to everyone. And they've just been tight-lipped on it. They, they're not commenting. I asked uh, Darren Palmer when I was in the truck, one-on-one -on -one with him driving around the track, hey, you got to come clean on this. And uh, he just kind of pushed that to the side. And he's a great guy. We had a great conversation. But he said, look, Tom, we're going to focus on other talking about other things here today. <laughs> and you, you have to know when to back off. Um, so when I was in the uh, truck taking videos, I went to the Pro Power onboard screen that you could see up there on, on the screen. And you see right under the truck, it says 472 miles. Now, this truck was fully charged. It was 100% charged. Um, the truck that Marquise Brownlee was in looked like it was about 80% charged, and it was showing 367 miles of range. Now, um, if you look at the, the if, if you would really look at the screen, he said it looked like it was about 80% charge. When I look at it, it looked like it was a little less than 80% charge. And if it was 70%, 78% uh, charged, and you did the math, it would come out to 472, exactly what mine did. And hmm. I know we had a lot of people comment that, oh, you know, it's probably just the same truck. It's not the same truck, took different color, different interior, different trim level, all this stuff. So it, we didn't have the same truck. So we, we know at least two. Ford F-150s out there are showing the same estimated range when they're fully charged. That doesn't mean that this truck's going to have 472 miles of range. This is an early pre-production model. Uh, some people speculated, well, maybe Ford even has a third battery pack that they're not telling us about, and they're going to announce that at some point in the future, and maybe these trucks have that third battery pack. That's a possibility. There's a lot of things that, that could be going on here, uh, but it's just my impression and we talked about this when Ford launched the Mach-E. Ford was very smart with how they, they did the build-up to the Mach-E, and, and they could be you know, duplicating that with the F-150 Lightning, whereas they just kind of keep, keep releasing more and more information, and the vehicle just gets better and better and better right up to the launch. So who knows? Somewhere between now and there, um, we could hear, oh, you know, we finally did the EPA range rating. We did better than 300. It's 350 miles uh, of EPA range rating. Uh, you know, so we, we, we you know, that, that's all just speculation, but it's good news to see this. It's better than if I got in the truck oh, well, and yeah. fully charged, it said 250 miles, you know? Right. That, that, that would be bad. Yeah. So Kyle, what do you think? Is it, is it going to get 300 miles? I'm like my, myself, I'm thinking once you do your, your 70 mile an hour road test, you're going to get at least 330, like at 70. That's just my, Oh, it's way too early to tell. I don't know. And any of this, honestly, sure. to be, you know, we, we just don't know. We don't even know the battery pack size to even do basic calculations with. So, you know, on one hand, you know, Ford is releasing a truck that impresses all of the journalists. It's awesome making an electric F-150. I'm so pumped about it. I'm actually wanting to get some property up here in Colorado and kind of have the out of spec ranch I was tweeting about this week and uh, going to take a look at the property later today. This would be the perfect like ranching vehicle. Town's only 20 minutes away. We could throw all the stuff in the back. It'd be awesome. Uh, Got to get a cowboy hat first though. I'm already in process of looking. Don't <laughs> there worry. Cowboy hats in Colorado? Is that? Oh yeah. Talking? Okay. This is a, you know, this is the high country out here. Uh, right. Anyway, I think Boys. look at the end of the day, awesome truck. But for me, I can't get excited about it till we hear the specs. 
However, Ford is alluding. They keep telling me you're going to be blown away by this thing. Right. It's going to be awesome. And that's like, that carries a lot of weight. So very much excited to test it once we hear the uh, the facts and figures. Will we get 472 miles of range or will it say that? I don't know. If we go off of Mach-E, it's purely a guessometer, a GOM. Therefore, that, you know, based off of the driving history, any EV can pretty much do 472 miles in X condition, uh, including my electric smart car. Maybe it involves some towing, but it could do it. Uh, you know, so who knows what the calculation is accounting for? Who knows if it's a rated range calculation or a guessometer on this early production car? Sounds like it could be a rated range calculation if Marquez's truck added up to the exact same as Tom's truck. But at the end of the day, it's a good headline, good way to get clicks, good way to convince a lot of people who don't know uh, anything about EVs yet. But it carries zero merit at this point. It's an indication that it's going to have a lot of range. Uh, what we'll be able to do is when Tom gets one or when I get one to do the 70 mile per hour highway range test, then we have a truly standardized, comparable test that we can then say, okay, it went X much farther than the Rivian or X much less than Cybertruck or whatever it would be. Um, and that's the only true metric because even EPA, different manufacturers run different cycles and it, it basically means nothing. Right. And no visibility yet on when the media is going to get their hands on those to drive, right? Probably early in the next year. No, oh, hard to say. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if Ford speeds that up. It'd be nice. I bet it's probably going to be closer to the end of this year than early next year. Let, let's see. You know, um, it, it's just speculation. But, I mean, they were talking about initially launching it in the spring of, of 2021. Right. You know, if that's if uh, 2022, if that's the case, then you would think a few months earlier, um, you, you, that, that start to become available in uh, in pre production form for some yeah, at least the early uh, for Mach E we were able to drive the car about eight eight to ten weeks before start of sale and okay. so that I think we should probably see around F one fifty okay well we'll see how it goes so but it's uh, it's promising and a lot of people are pretty excited about this truck uh, that's that's for sure um, now I was talking to somebody about it the other day they hadn't heard about it and they were just like amazed at you know at the what was possible with like an electric pickup truck at this point and uh yeah also someone just made a comment uh that says most americans do not have sixty thousand dollars for a truck or car totally yeah. agree not discounting that it's a lot of money because you're not going to be able to buy the base one as right. a general consumer you need to be a fleet customer however i think ford will sell every single one of these that they can make uh you know at oh, yeah. their price points currently. So to them, zero incentive to make it less expensive Expensive I mean, at this point for a general consumer. Sell everyone you can make. And there are less expensive cars on the market that you can buy. And I had, let, me, let, let me correct you one there. You will be able to buy the base model if you're a regular customer. Not You don't have to be a, a oh, fleet. Oh, really? You just have is, to buy it from a commercial store, right? Um, it is commercially oriented. but uh, And I specifically asked this to Darren. And, I, and, yeah. and he said... If you're a regular a regular individual, you'll be able to buy it, but it will be oh, awesome. oriented. Because I, you know, I, I made a comment that, well, you know, it's great that you came in at forty thousand, but the average person's not going to be able to buy that. And he said, nope, they will. They'll be able to buy it. Amazing news. That's great. So I was under the impression that you're only going to be able to buy that one at like the commercial dealers. I will. Uh, I'll. I'll. I, I recorded our conversation, okay. so I will um, review those tapes and see exactly how it was worded. And I, I suppose it's possible. I'm not remembering perfectly exactly how he explained it to me, but I was left with the impression that anybody will be able to buy that, but that it is aimed at a commercial audience. But if somebody was happy with the setup the way it was, they'd be able to buy it. Like I said, that, that's all going to be packed into my my video that I do. Uh, and it'll be up on Inside EVs in a week or so. Um, and I'll, I'll make sure that I specify exactly. I'll even quote what he said on that one point. Sure. Yeah, yeah. that'd be awesome. So I had a uh, an ad come up for Ford F-150s in my neighborhood that I could buy now, like regular combustion, you know, uh, Ford F-150s. So I clicked on it just to kind of see, and man, it was like sixty some thousand dollars for one, eighty some thousand dollars for the other one. It was like people spend a lot of money on Ford F-150s. You know? Oh yeah, well they're so, nice now. They're a luxury car. Yeah. So, you know, and having this like this kind of performance as well, like Tom was telling us last week about the performance at 70 miles an hour. The floor and you know you're back in your seat people will pay for that 
Yeah, but like I said, they'll sell every single one of them that they can make. It doesn't right. work for every use case, but there right. are enough use cases to fill all of production for them. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And we've said this before. This The F-150 Lightning doesn't have to be everything for everybody. The 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 pickup truck market in, in the United States is enormous. And if it only worked perfectly for 10% of that market, <laughs> it would still be a fantastic vehicle sales-wise. Yeah. I think it'll work for a lot more than 10%. I mean, I think 50% plus of, of, of the people that buy trucks, this will work for uh, because yeah. so many people buy trucks and don't like, you know, they're not using them as dump trucks. They're not towing, you know, 6,000 pounds across state lines every day. Now, sure, there's a lot of people that do that. But the majority of people that buy pickup trucks in this country do not use the pickup truck for its to, for its maximum capacity. And, uh, you know, when we don't we, we still don't know, to Kyle's point earlier, we still don't know how capable this truck will be. It might even be able to serve those people. We, we just don't know yet. We don't know yeah. all the specs. We don't know the battery size. You know, we we, we, we don't know how uh, we all, we do know that towing really makes any vehicle inefficient. It uses a ton of energy. We, we know that they can't break the laws of physics, but you know, let, let, let's, let, let's, uh, you know, this is all speculation. Like Kyle said, even with me posting the picture of that range, the, the range there, I'm not saying the car can go for the truck can go 472 miles or that it'll even get close right. to that, but right. it is news. You know, it's, 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 Hey, look, you know, I, I think if we didn't point this out, we wouldn't be doing our job to say, look, you know, we don't know what this means. It, it, it could mean something. It might be just a software glitch. We have no idea. But look at what this says. Now this is a you would think you would think if it was completely wrong, if there was a total problem with it, after Brownlee caught it on his video, Ford would have done something and corrected it. You know, and right. said like, look, we can't let anybody else see this. You know, because it's a it's an error, you know, or they could just be allowing it to get out there. So people like us talk about it and they get in the news. So we, we, there you we go. Don't know what it means. That would be the smart move. Um, it's going <laughs> to go farther than whatever Ford has said based off of history. Yeah, but not yeah, going by the Monty, expect 500 miles far. You know? No, don't, I wouldn't expect don't expect 500 miles. But yeah, expect 300 miles. I think you, I think you can feel very comfortable expecting 300 miles, at least in the summertime. I think, I think uh, very excited to do all the towing tests with this. We're in the process yeah. of getting all the equipment needed for us yeah. to do EV towing tests, thermal testing, all this stuff. And uh, you know, of course, that means getting a trailer, a standardized trailer that we can use. And yeah, this is going to be an exciting one. A lot of videos to come up from our side. A lot of technical videos. I, I'd also videos. add that. The way that we work with the car makers themselves um, is uh, in a collaborative uh, relationship whilst maintaining journalistic integrity and, and principles. And if that was, you know, a mistake that's going to land someone in trouble or get someone in hot water, you know, they could have easily reached out to Tom and said, look, on this occasion, can you just not run that story because of X, Y, Z reason? Here's the reason. We'll justify it. It's a mistake. It's, you know, someone didn't mean to do that. It doesn't mean anything. But, and that happens occasionally. And sometimes there's a reason to run that story. Uh, and sometimes there's a reason to work with, you know, you make a judgment on a case by case basis. But, but they didn't, you know, and, they, you know, their take on it was, well, it's in the car. You can run it, say what you want. Doesn't mean anything. So it's not one of those cases where it was, you know, kind of, looked at looked at uh, let's try and suppress it or anything like that so ford aren't doing that in this case right so exactly and and like martin said i did reach out because you know i i i i kind of didn't say we're not going to run it if you tell us not to i said look we're planning on running this unless there's a major issue with 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 you know if ford's going to really have an issue with this i'm going to get somebody in trouble or something and they said nope you know that was on the vehicle that we allowed you to photograph and picture you know, we're still saying 300 miles is our range is what we're targeting. But, um, you know, you have permission to shoot it. So go ahead and post it. So, yeah. so uh, sticking with the F-150 just for a moment. Um, so Ford had its Q2 results uh, this week. And uh, so the uh, Mike Levine is our communications manager, I guess. And uh, he mentioned it on Twitter. He says that it has generated 120,000 reservations uh, since its unveiling in May, and about three quarters of those are new customers to Ford. So that, that's pretty cool. 120,000. They've they've got to be delighted with that that they're not cannibalizing 
their combustion true you know buyers and that these are firstly new people that have come into ford um or people that came back to ford or you know if i think about when i was growing up i used to have pictures of fast fords on my bedroom wall but would i rush out and buy one now well if you look at what you know we can buy in this country not really like there's not that kind of passion that love affair with the brand anymore they're you know their european market share is 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 poor i know and right. uh but so if it brings people back like i would love i would happily get back into uh and spend my money with a ford very happy um you know I, my memories of growing up and seeing fords with massive you know spoilers on the back and cosworths and ford rallying and all that that's in my kind of that's that's very deep in here i'd love to spend money on a ford again it's not, they don't make anything that i want to buy so again if it brings people back into the brand that wouldn't have been a purchaser they must be so happy with that they should be delighted at that hey, hey martin i think your volume is just a little bit low but okay no worries i'll turn it up also I mean, martin someone commented that you saw a goose this week <laughs> oh what <laughs> okay yeah. let me turn myself up is that better or am i too loud that's oh yeah better. Okay, yeah. cool. So, uh, so yeah, so I did a, a, a review video of the Kona, and it didn't go very well uh, because I drove, <laughs> I drove through our uh, our park, and uh, and it was geese crossing time, and I've never seen so many geese cross a road. I literally stopped, and then there was just like thousands of these things. So I just couldn't go anywhere. So that was my my review video was just keys crossing the road. I mean, I talked about the car a lot, but every I'd look up occasionally and there was more. Occasionally a duck or a swan would join in, but that was gridlock. It was rush hour. <laughs> what, 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 where, where, how where, many there were, really. Where, where can we see this? <laughs> uh, it's on, It's on. Uh, let me find it. It's on YouTube somewhere on, the, on a, a channel that we make content for uh, called, uh, called Best Electric Vehicle. Let me find it and... Um, yeah, you, if, I've seen nothing like it, and I'll never make a uh, uh, a video like it uh, uh, again. But um, yeah, I mean, we got to talk about the uh, the car plenty, uh, but um, but yeah, uh, let me find that for you. What kind of geese do you have there in the UK? I think I think they're Canada geese, but you would be the right person to correct me on that. Well, I've always called them. Well, we have Canada a lot of geese. Canadian geese down here too, or Canada. I'm not even sure how do you say them. I should know so, they're my from my home. Let country. me. Um, let me bring this up on here and uh is that am i screen sharing the right thing now uh ev wheels best electric vehicle go. yes so there's the kona electric yes this is the kona electric and it's just uh, oh it's just <laughs> geese crossing time so, so we just had to uh we just had to stop for a long time i mean we talked about regen and we talked about flappy paddles and we talked it was a, a good video <laughs> but especially if you like you know wildfowl Right, and this electric vehicle. This is a channel that we we're actually all going to be producing content for in point of view style um, reviews. So I have a channel that this is all I do. It's called the Kyle Connor YouTube channel where I just do my own personal reviews. But Tom and I are going to do some stuff for this with Martin and uh, film some reviews of EVs. Oh, nice! I, so, they just keep awesome. on coming. <laughs> There you go. I wasn't I wasn't going to bring it up, but it's it's surreal. No, that's that's the real that's news of the week here, let's be honest. 472 miles on an F150, no one cares. No. 500 geese. Now we're geese, talking. Man. It's just the geese video. I'll All see right. if I can get a herd of deer crossing my road when I do the point of view. But that's going to be a thing now, guys. We have to all make sure there's wildlife in these point of view videos. The right. whole review, you can't move. You're just sitting there in nature right. spotting. You're just surrounded by nature. I like that. It's so quiet. They don't get out of the way. There you go. Well, they all are right. Canada geese, apparently. So there you go. Okay, let's get back going. To, let's just get back to the news. Uh, so, yeah, we, we have a meeting we have to get to at some point. So we, we can't go too long today. Um, so the big news of the week is Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. It reported uh, uh, record sales, deliveries, and profits uh, in this past quarter, Q2. Uh, we're not going to spend too much time on the numbers, but basically they sold 2,340 Model S, 204,081 Model 3 and Y. Uh, that's an amazing 151% increase in vehicles produced year over year. Um, it also deployed 85 megawatts of solar and 1,274 megawatt hours of energy storage. And all of that gave them just over 12 billion or just under 12 billion in revenue and 101.14 billion in net 
income, which is the first time they've you know crossed a billion dollar mark for a net income. So, you know, great quarter. Uh, of course, uh, some people have been fond of saying that the company is only profitable because of regulatory credits. So we should point out that this record profit came despite a, a lower number of credits than last quarter and the quarter before. It's a 70% drop year over year. At, uh, I think they had they brought in $354 million, which is still you know not a small amount. And it definitely helps the bottom line. But uh, they made a good profit without that as well. So with those numbers out of the way, uh, before I go on, did anyone want to touch on any of that? A lot of big numbers. Right. That's it. Okay. So let's keep going. That was my contribution. That was great. That's a good contribution. <laughs> I appreciate that, Kyle. Uh, so the most interesting part of the uh, Tesla financial reporting day over the years has been the things that come up on the call with financial analysts. And that is, again, the, again, the case this quarter. However, this may be the last interesting call for a while, at least. Dur during this call, uh, CEO Elon Musk let it be known that he was no longer going to be an active participant in them in the future, unless, of course, there is something important he believes he needs to say. Um, in any case, he was there for this one, uh, which took place at the Austin, Texas uh, Gigafactory, and he gave some pretty good updates on what's happening with production and batteries and, and product. So talking generally about near-term production, he said that the growth of production is being limited by the computer chip supply, like everyone is experiencing. Uh, still, as we can see by the, by the delivery numbers, they are coping with the issue. I think it's fair to say that they are doing better than many of the traditional OEMs who've had to slow or completely shut down production of different models across their lineups. Uh, Tesla has the advantage of basic, basically only building on two platforms right now. So they've been able to substitute different kinds of chips and then writing software quickly for these replacements. And this is one area where it's a strong software capability shines through, I, be I believe. Uh, in any case, Musk says both the Berlin, Germany, and Austin, Texas Gigafactory under construction right now will begin producing Model Y this year, though in limited numbers. Uh, everyone wants to hear what Elon Musk is. Right. Uh, there's some, someone is asking, so Youngworth Marcus on the screen says, uh, everybody wants to hear what Elon says. Nothing against the team. He is supposed to, he is supposed to, to these earning calls. Um, and I don't know. I don't know if the CEOs are on every earnings call. I think it depends on the company. I don't know if you, if yeah, I mean, any look, Steve, Steve Jobs never did earnings calls, and Jeff Bezos doesn't do earnings calls. So right. it's not on. A, it's it's. I would say more rare for someone who is more product focused and someone like Elon uh, to do them because you can tell that he doesn't really like doing them, or he gets asked. You know that whole uh, these are bonehead questions thing from a couple of years ago. So whereas, you know, the financial nerds are used to those bonehead questions and they just take them all in their stride. So sure. it's not unheard of for someone like him not to do these kind of calls. Right. Well, in any case, they're going to be, he's, he was on the call this time and uh, I've, I've always really liked this since I've been like listening to pretty much every, every call since 2012 or whenever it was, they went public and started doing them. And, you know, I was, I was kind of liked it. You know, he's an interesting guy to listen to. And, you know, there's something about hearing it from his mouth, exactly what the plan is, because there's lots of nuance and uh, this doesn't come across in print so well, you know, you can read about things, but, you know, hearing, hearing the guy speak about his plans and how he feels about different things, you know, you get a much better sense of what's going on. So I'm, I'm personally going to miss, miss that, but they're, they're, mm -hmm. They have other things going on. They have a AI day coming up uh, this August. Uh, if anyone has the exact date there, just let me know. Um, so that's going to be another chance to hear we know what's going on with a big a big part of the company because AI is yeah. all about uh, getting the full self driving package, yeah. autonomous vehicles, you know, going. And there's still a lot of work to be done there. But August nineteenth. So and if you thought you understood nothing on Battery Day. Uh, us mere mortals will understand nothing on AI day. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's, <laughs> there's, hopefully they'll break it down. I mean, yeah. He, he, he said on Twitter months ago that uh, it would be, he would do an AI day to, for recruitment to show people in the industry what they're doing to get good people to join them. It won't be to it, a product day. Okay. But everyone will still watch it. And sure. We'll oh, yeah. 
still have no idea what they're talking about. Um, all right. So Model Y <laughs> this year being built in limited numbers, though, not full scale production. It'll take some time to ramp up a bit. Uh, so these Model Y will have one piece castings for both front and rear and may have the new 4680 cells. Now, that still isn't certain. The 4680 production is facing some engineering challenges. So uh, he says they have a contingency plan to use 2170 cells just in case. So 2170 cells uh, are what's being used in the Model 3 and Model Y now produced in Fremont and the long range versions of the 3 and Y in China. Uh, of course, uh, everyone, wants to know, everyone wants to know what's going on with the Cybertruck. So we got some visibility on that finally. Uh, Lars Moravi, he's the vice president of vehicle engineering at Tesla. He says the Cybertruck is currently in its alpha stages. So uh, they finished engineering the architecture of the vehicle, which is, of course, very different from anything they've done before. And they will be moving into the beta phases later this year and begin production in Texas once Model Y is up, is up and running there. Um, so that's alpha. That's kind of not as far as long as, as I think uh, some people might have expected. But you know, beta this year, and uh, yeah, but no production. Don't look for production this this year at all, at all. Um, so later on the call, must explain that Tesla will need a lot of cell supply to have a rate of production for Cybertruck and Semi high enough to be profitable. So contrary to rumors that we heard last week, it looks like Semi won't be starting production until further into the year, into 2022, um, maybe by summer. So uh, they're going to be moving all kinds of cell manufacturing equipment into Berlin and Austin Giga factories later this year. But they're going to have to modify some of it because of things they learned at the pilot plant in Fremont. So like, so cell production won't start right away. I believe there's, they have like these, uh, the anim, I think it's the cathode material maybe, has to go pass through these rollers. And now the, with these bigger cells like that, that cathode material is thicker. And it's the rollers aren't holding up, so they're being damaged somehow. And and they have some engineering challenges. They're going to fix that. But the cells themselves, everything else is should be fine. Anyway, uh, right. They do eventually expect to hit an annualized rate of 100 gigawatt hours of 4680 cells, possibly by the end of next year. I think he gives it like a 50% chance of them hitting their annualized rate of 100 gigawatt hours. The year of the 4680, which is a, if you if they were only making cyber trucks, that would be like 500,000 cyber trucks worth of production. But that's going to go into, you know, semi and and uh, model Y, and cyber trucks. So, I think the other important thing to mention is that Mega Pack is sold out until the end of next year. So tons of demand. Also, besides Tesla's own battery supply, it expects the amount of cells it buys from other suppliers will double next year. Oh, and then there's Powerwall. That's the residential energy storage unit. They have a massive backlog of orders for those as well because uh, they use some of the same chips in those as, as in the cars, but they're pr prioritizing cars over Powerwalls. However, they are they plan on hugely increasing the production rate of those by next year, approaching 20,000 a week. That's like an annualized rate of a, a million units, a million units. That's so. Uh, that's a lot, of course. Uh, energy storage is a big part of the company's future. Musk says uh, there's probably demand for over one million power walls a year, and in the longer term, mega packs will need to need to uh, hit like one or two gigawatt hours a year. So, Tom, a lot there. Any any big takeaways for you? Uh, to be honest with you, not really. It's what I expected to hear. There's no, there's no breaking news here. You know, they're they're going to have manufacturing hurdles to overcome with the, with these new cells. I, I don't think that comes to anyone's surprise. You know, uh, um, this is pretty. There, there's no surprises in there for me. Is 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 basically I expected to hear kind of that. You know, don't expect to see the Cybertruck anytime soon. And that's how that's what I took out of this. You know, and uh, you know, I I I. I I don't think we're going to get any cyber trucks in this year. Even they talked about, you know, um, a couple early models. I mean, maybe they'll hand build one or two in December just so they could say, Hey, we said we'd build them in 2021 and here they are. There's the three that we did. So that could be the case. 
But, you know, I, I think this is getting pushed way back. And I mean, I'm a reservation holder uh, on the, the, the Cybertruck. I'm glad that I put in my reservation for the F-150 also because I want to get a hold of an electric pickup truck. And I think right. I'm going to get my, I'm going to have an opportunity to drive the F-150 way before I'll be able to drive the Cybertruck. And uh, I think I'll still get it because I think it'll be really cool to have both of them and do some really cool side by side yeah. videos. Um, and you'll be able to sell, then, sell yeah. one or the other. Which and then I'll well, sell right? one of them like in six months or eight months later. I'll probably be able to yeah. sell it either profit. one in more than what I paid for it, you know, six, eight months down the road. But um, yeah, you know, th that that's th that there's nothing, nothing that surprised me in there. I don't know about you guys. Um, it's kind of what I expected um, to see. And that's, you know, these, uh, the, 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 you know, these, these earnings reports, I think it's great for us to do a high level overview of what happened. Um, and what was discussed and so forth. Right. But like, I'm not, I'm not all for really digging into the bones of these and, 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 and spending a lot of time on it. I mean, leave that up to CNBC. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I, I really liked it because I really like being able to listen to this because I really didn't, I wasn't sure where they're at with like, is the model Y, is it going to have the 4680 cells? And it, it may not. Because you know we don't we don't have a lot of visit. They're not talking about how far along or what, what exactly is going on. So this is like their opportunity to kind of lay it out there and ex and explain but, as much as they're going to explain. But they really happening. didn't, right? I mean, they, they, well, they, yeah. a lot of maybes, right? Well, I mean, I have I have a pretty good understanding after listening to like the call, you know, closely and and reading the text of it and you know making my notes. I, I have a pretty good idea of what's what's happening. Okay, I'm well, you sure followed it closer that. than I did. <laughs> Hey, exciting news. Are we going to talk about the whole supercharger network thing? Yes. I think cool. maybe. I don't know what, the, which part. Oh, where we're now going to be able to use non Teslas supposedly on the supercharger network? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. This is big news. Oh, so uh, this week through Twitter, Elon was conversing with someone. I don't know who. And uh, somehow it came up where, uh, you know, he said he's going to open up the supercharger network, which is not the first time he said this, by the way. I think right. he said this from years ago. And the questions start there. So I think, you know, I think we ran a story or, or maybe it was electric or someone ran a story that I read that said, here's how you're going to do it. You're going to have a Tesla app as a third party user. You'll pull up. You'll say, hey, I'm on 14A. Uh, or 14C, V3s go up to D, right. and you will say, start the charger, bill my Apple Pay or whatever it is, and then plug in the car. The question is the plug in the car part. Uh, so no no issues. It won't be hard to connect the car through the Tesla app. That makes sense. Super easy. Uh -huh. um, what are we going to see? Are we going to see superchargers have dedicated CCS posts, uh, certain of them, sort of like Europe, where you have the Tesla connector, and then CCS, well, in Europe, they have type two and then type two CCS. Or are we gonna see full on um, you know, adapters that you'll have to buy and then you can access the supercharger network? Or is Tesla gonna go CCS completely? Uh, what What do you guys think? Oh, he, he talked about this on the call actually. And I, I, didn't, okay. I didn't mention it for, cause I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> but well, this the, is the real news here. I know, I know, right? <laughs> ah, dropped the lead, buried the lead again. So, yeah. So he's going to have an adapter. So he was. He said, yeah, okay. we'll have an app. So if you're like a non-Tesla owner, you can download the the app, and then you can show up and you know punch in what what stall you're at, and uh, but you're going to have to have an adapter. So you can either buy one, or he said maybe they can make them available there somehow. If people don't steal them, which you know people are going to steal them, <laughs> unless they're tied down or something, That's, and well, uh, I believe Drew Baglino was in the background. I think he said they have a re they have a solution for this. That's what he said. Yeah, it right. was like it was like uh, it was like when my son says we're going to have ice cream later, and I say we'll see about that. Uh, uh, Elon <laughs> right. was like we can have adapters and we'll leave them at supercharging stations if they don't get nicked, and Drew Baglino was like we have a solution for that. And it was like, he just left it there. Like just, it was like, you can't tell off Elon Musk because you won't have a job tomorrow, but he got as close to it. Well, right. don't forget. I mean, EVgo is doing it with the adapters, with their stations to, 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 to power Teslas. Are so they tethered on? Like, are they, are they like chained okay. on or something? Yeah. So these yeah. are you Chatamo adapters that have been elongated. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, Tesla could do that, could, could develop the adapter and just literally have it attached to the supercharger and have it connected in a way where you really can't steal it unless you, you know, 
you know. Yeah, well, so then at that point, you can choose the CCS handle or you can choose the Tesla handle, however it gets adapted. I mean, it's and it's also, if everyone, if every stall has these, there's no reason to steal them anyway because you, where, where are you going to use them? You know, they're, right. you don't need it for anything, right? It's all, they're always going to be well, where you need them. If they're going to sell them and there's a worth to them on the on you know black market, then people will will steal anything. But yeah, um, yeah, and of course they don't have that problem over here where you know they're, they're it's it's a CCS combo plug over here, so uh, it is a US or North American issue, isn't it? Just for that proprietary connector, so it'll be easier it to do it in some markets than other than some others. Right. Um, but yeah, you've already seen it in Europe, right, Martin? Right. Remember uh, when accidentally yes. they didn't lock the superchargers down yes. and anyone could charge on them? It was yeah. in Germany Oops. and somebody turned up with a VW. It was the Next Move YouTube channel or Next Move or a, like a EV yeah. rental. Like, a, I like those guys. Channel. And they so, uh, they just turned up. They were like, "Let's plug in an ID three, and it started charging. <laughs> and they were like, <laughs> "Okay, so yeah, like, obviously like the, the protocol is there and it works, and so." Yeah. Um, the billing would be relatively easy, uh, but yeah, in terms of those cables, they are all very short and designed for the rear quarter of the car. Mm -hmm. So it, it's gonna you're gonna see some crazy parking as people try and get those. Uh, oh, I can't wait! Them, yeah. Like stretching them around the car, they're gonna be bent and and all sorts. But uh, and what I liked about this, by the way, what I liked, I ran a a, a question on my, uh, my my podcast last week, which is. How do you stop people just sitting on DC fast chargers till 100? percent I mean, they're doing nothing wrong, by the way. Right. But you know, it's if they could be more polite, if if the taper goes down. And someone who uh, listen, a guy called Jim Jim Burness, who runs a, a US company called National Car Charging, they mm -hmm. um, uh, do hardware. Uh, and and he said, well, why don't you just charge more as your car gets slower? And then Elon Musk said on the call exactly the same thing. Why don't we just charge more as cars get slower? So if you want to turn up with a you know a three kilowatt charging car, that's fine. It's going to cost you like two dollars a kilowatt hour. Turn up with a Tycon, and it'll cost you that. And and because his point was, it's about throughput. Like right. they are throughput constrained on the supercharging network. So it's all about dwell time, and you, they want people to use it and to generate revenue, but they want you off that that as soon as your charge rate starts to drop and so they will do that by hitting you in your pocket and i think that's really smart you know and if if tesla you know you've seen that they'll change the price of their cars at the drop of a hat i'm sure they'll have no issue with dynamically charging for electricity well, I mean, they're doing that now to some extent already yeah, we'll have an issue with that they're not going to be allowed to do that by law it's going to be legislated i mean they're they're, gonna, they're, yeah they're not going to be allowed to charge more they're going to have to build by kilowatt hour not by time California right. already started this. Right, but they can build more per kilowatt hour because they were saying on the yeah, calls. They well, don't say you have to charge 12 yeah. cents a kilowatt hour. They yeah. say you have to charge by kilowatt hour by and kilowatt then hour. set your pricing. So yeah, I guess I guess they could figure out how once it gets to a certain state of charge. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, 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 I, I sure they, I guess they could figure it out. They but, could also yeah. charge a parking fee for the amount of time that you're plugged in, like charge point yeah. stations well, do sometimes. So so on, on the yeah, call they were, they, I'm not sure. California is going to get really involved with this. Uh, uh, th we have we've just seen the beginning of 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 how they're going to try to regulate how people charge for electric cars. Um, and I don't think we're we're there yet. What we're going to see. So all I'm saying is there's going to be hurdles because government's going to get involved now. Now that this is turning into a big business, it was like a, a novelty for the last ten years. And there's going to be a lot of regulations on how you can charge people to charge their cars. So I'm just saying it's it's not a slam dunk that they'll be able to do whatever they want and charge yeah. people 10 times for that last, you know, five kilowatt hour. I think it's yeah, great don't disagree there. I'm That's not I'm not against it, but I'm just saying that, that this is going to be a legal issue in the coming years. And I don't think the network providers, Tesla included, are just going to have carte blanche to charge whatever they want to say, you know what? After you're eighty percent, it's ten times the fee because we want you to get mm. the hell off the charging station. I don't think they're going to be allowed to do that. I mean, that, this isn't all settled yet, but let's oh, say wow. mm, right. that's a bummer. So I hope they are able to set their own pricing. So on on the call, they did mention that they're going to charge. They want to charge more for certain times of day when when the usage is high. So well, they do that now, right? But they're going to expand more more of that. I think I'm not sure if they do that everywhere, but. Uh, anywhere that matters, they do. Okay. And, and here's another question I have. These adapters, 
the, the, what's the going to be the limit on them? They're, they're probably not like, I don't know right. if they're going to be able to deliver the full power that the superchargers can like the Chatamo well, adapters now are limited at 50 kilowatts. I mean, it's well, an it's inter inter yeah. interest to engineer well, well, it. So it does, because I mean, that'll, that'll help throughput. You don't want to have all the other off brand cars slowing down going you know, even throughput. slower. Yeah, yeah, I know. Right. Well, keep in mind, superchargers are 680 volt max, I believe. So you're not going to be able to charge Tycon e-tron DT without utilizing the onboard booster, which they all have, uh, but yeah. most of them only come with a 50 kilowatt, 400 volt onboard charger. And I've always That's recommended true. to Tycon owners to not purchase the extra, uh, you know, 800 or what is it? 150 kilowatt, 400, 400 volt. volt. Yeah. Yeah. Onboard booster because there's like one station in the whole country that could output 150 kilowatts and then also be limited to 400 volts. I think there's um, 10, Kyle. You're, 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 uh, but you're Tesla, underestimating it. There's about 10. Tesla's okay. going to improve the speed of the superchargers at some yeah. point as well, though. I mean, that's going to be going yeah. up. So, uh, yeah, but, but, uh, so version three is probably voltage, uh, can go higher. Yeah. Uh, so that may not be a huge issue. Uh, but version two, I don't think can right. uh, no. go up to 800 volts for charging. Right. Okay. So uh, also so in charge of news. A lot unknown is what we're saying here. We, yes. As far yeah. as how people are going to use the Tesla superchargers, what their limit's going to be, what they're going to pay. We're, you know, all we have is a couple of tweets by Elon. Right. I'm going to interview some Tesla owners at superchargers and see what they think about others using their network. I think I'll be, be furious. Because oh, I can't like wait to see. Because well, they've paid for the through the uh, price of the vehicle, you've paid for the charges. Well, and all yeah, of a sudden, I can't so wait. It's going to be. I'm just going to do rapid fire. You know, 150 people interview, and then you know, in a few weeks, I'll put out the video, and we'll see what everyone thinks. Okay. I think it's a. I, I think it's only downside. I think you know. Totally in, in agree. A, well, in a quarter, they made what is it? 12 billion of revenue in a quarter, and I saw the Tesla fans, or the, like the the ones that always want to put a good spin on it, being like, "Yes, more revenue for Tesla." They don't need more revenue at this stage. What they need is right. not to have superchargers blocked by a bunch of right. crappy old EVs <laughs> and having people that have spent 150 grand on a Model S turn up, not charge because it's blocked. That does their brand so much damage. Right. I hundred percent agree. Idea. It's, it's, it's uh, a reason to buy a Tesla. And they're letting the it go. You buy a Tesla. Elon mentioned that they're going to. They, they really need to increase that uh, supercharger production and and output as well. I think he, you know, he he wants to put a, a much higher rate than car production. I think he said fifty percent more than car production or something. But he, they do recognize that they do need a lot more superchargers installed if they're going to have other people charging at them. So I don't know if it's going to be enough. We'll have to see. But but we, it'll never be enough. We're yeah. up against the clock, so I want to keep on moving forward. Uh, so in, in other charging news, it seems like Electrify America is no longer going to install new Chademo chargers like the Nif Nissan Leaf uses for fast charging uh, starting in 2022 and at least outside of California. So, Tom, I, I think you found the story in, in Electrify America's national investment plan and wrote up a story for Inside EVs. Uh, so does this spell the end of the road for Chademo or is it too early to panic for Leaf owners? Well, Chatmo hit the end of the road when Nissan said they were going to switch to to the. Yeah, so we're at, we're past the end of the road. Oh, we're yeah. into the grass on yeah. the other side. Yeah. yeah. So let me just explain this a little bit. So with the two billion dollar settlement um, that uh, Electro uh, Volkswagen agreed to for the Dieselgate scandal, that was um, cut into two separate programs. Uh, Twelve. Uh, One point two billion went to the national ZEV plan, zero, zero um, emission vehicle uh, infrastructure and education plan, and eight hundred million went to California. So there's actually two completely separate programs going on here. California gets overseen by CARB, the California Air Resource Board, and the national plan gets overseen by the EPA. So in buried on page, I think it was 56 of the uh, of the, the the national plan. And the funny thing is, when I reached out to Electra America for the comment, <laughs> their public relations um, manager <laughs> was surprised that I that I caught it because this has not been reported yet. Right. And he said, Dig "Don't deep, tell me Dig deep. sit around at home and read that." 60 or 70 page, you know, cycle three plan. I and I told him, I said, yes, I did. And, and, and this is what I found. He said, okay, so yeah, you know, this is our plan. So what's happening is in cycle three starts in January. 
the, the there's four um, thirty month cycles in this in the ten year Electrify America plans. So we're gonna, about to begin cycle three, and in cycle three, starting in January of 2022. Electrify America for their national plan outside of California will no longer install Chatamo plugs. They, they, they always install one at each location. They're going to stop installing them. They can't stop in California because California CARB oversees that program won't allow them to. CARB is saying, no, you're going to continue to install these until we tell you that you no longer have to. The EPA, I guess, went along with it and said, OK, you know, we, we're, we're looking at the landscape of electric vehicles and we see the end for uh, Chatamo. We don't uh, you know, you don't have to in continue to install these. Now, Electrify America will continue to maintain the stations they have. They have about by the end of this year, they're going to have 800 Chatamo plugs, 800 locations. Each location has one. They're going to continue to support them. They're going to continue to maintain them, but they're not going to install any more. Um, and their reason being is, look, there's two reasons. Number one, Chatamo cars are, are being phased out. And that's just the, the face. In the last, I looked this up, in the last three years, we've averaged less than a thousand Chatamo cars per month purchased over the last 36 months. So it's such a tiny part of, 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 the, of, of electric vehicle adoption right now that you know it, it's it, it, it there's no path forward in the united states for chatamo uh connectors there simply is there's no future for them uh, and number two a lot of people say well tesla vehicles can use the the chatamo adapter at electrify america charging stations and and so now now you're cutting out all of the test the potential tesla customers and that's not the case because now there are ccs adapters available they actually in that cycle cited me from my article that I wrote on the C, the, the, the C-Tech CCS Tesla adapter. And that's just the first one. There's going to be more of these adapters coming out. So if Tesla customers really want to use the Electrify American network, they'll be able to use the CCS connectors. So for those two reasons, they said, we're going to, we're, we're going to stop investing in Chatamo. Uh, and they plan to do so in California too. As soon as CARB says, okay, we're at the point now where you know, um, this is really, you know, uh, an, an issue that needs to go away and, and then let them. I, I suspect it'll be during this 30 month period because they're going to continuously monitor the sales of, of Chatamo vehicles. And once it gets to, I guess, you know, maybe Carb is waiting for it to get under 500 a month sales in the U.S. At some point, they're going to say, OK, you don't need to install these anymore. Yeah, and I feel bad, and I feel, oh, Dom, you're, you're, you're muted, Dom. Um, I feel bad for everyone that was sold a Chatamo vehicle, um, but they're totally not going agree. away. They're not, they're not being taken off. Right. They're, not, they're not being taken off existing chargers, but Leaf, Leaf owners watching this uh, should have every right uh, of feeling a little bit annoyed uh, at this. Um, and look, we live and breathe this. So I can sit here and say, well, I saw this coming and, you know, be smug. But that's of no use to someone who's out, you know, spent their own hard earned money on a on a car. So look, but they're not being taken off existing charges. Right. And... Now you're being too kind, Martin. Anyone who bought a leaf didn't do any research. <laughs> OK, OK. I can the information is easily accessible about yeah, how yeah. terrible they are in thermal management look, and charging. I, I will, look, I will defend Chatham. No, I'm you just can... making a joke. Uh, you can release, not no, but to the general point, I will defend Chadamo. You can release the cable uh, uh, out of out of the vehicle. It's bi-directional. It always works. Okay, it's only fifty kilowatts, but the protocol is simple and always. You never have any problems compared to CCS. So there's reasons going for it. And Chadamo is not going away. It's merging with uh, the Chinese standard. So Xiaoji, which is going to be Japanese and Chinese, it's going to. Uh, it'll be the biggest connector in the world if, it, as China goes with it. Because Physically makes, as well. Yeah, like yeah, it's huge. So <laughs> it's not going anywhere, but it isn't going to be around in the US. And I suspect Europe is probably going to follow you guys before too long. Right. Yeah. Why Why do we need Chatamo? You can't even buy a new Chatamo car I, except the Leaf and an Outlander PHEV. Yeah, I was going to say the Mitsubishi the Outlander had, yeah, the Outlander. for some reason. Yeah, I see like gone. one a year, and I'm very yeah. excited every time I do. I go, whoa! Yeah, uh, a, new, a new version coming out of that, by uh, the way. Yeah, this this isn't that sad. And plus, you can't even road trip Leafs on a long distance because they overheat. So tested, right. proven, done it many times. I right. do wish that Nissan, though, and I actually think Nissan is obligated to make an adapter 
So agreed, a hundred percent. Owners can use um, CCS uh, stations. You know, they Directly. really should do this. Can you uh, do that? It can't be Directly. that difficult. I'm sure Nissan could put that together. I mean, Even if they have to sell it, you know, at five, six hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think they should give it to Leaf owners that have bought Leafs, but even if they say, no, we're not going to do that, we need to at least break even on this. Um, even if they sell it for, you know, hundreds of dollars, that would open up a whole new world of of, of accessibility for Leaf That's owners, the, and that would kind of take the sting out of this, I right. think. And uh, I, I, I think they do that. They're not, yeah. they're not going to give them away. Nissan doesn't have that kind of money. Well, if someone just needs to make a Chatamo to CCS adapter, it just needs a little interfacing in between, and then you're good to go. I'm sure we can put a man on the moon. We can <laughs> somehow make this electricity go from this place to this place. It's all right. DC. so I It's mean, all the same power. It's just how do you ask for how much? That's yeah. the question. So, all right, let's uh, move on real quick because that, that team's call was uh, our boss is looking for yeah. But the, and oh, sorry no. about that ringing. Is I had like, was? I had like three, different, three different devices oh, going you guys here, enjoy. laptops and phones oh. and everything beeping at me. And I, I shut down most of them, but I couldn't <laughs> He's find gonna be the, furious. One, the one that everyone could hear. But uh, so, but we need to mention that this, um, the Chevy Bolt EV is facing a recall again. Uh, a couple of weeks ago on the show, we told you that uh, GM told owners of the Bolt EV the Bolt EV that was made in uh, from 2017 to 2019 with batteries from South Korea, not the ones made in Michigan, uh, to park their cars outside and don't charge overnight after a couple of them experienced battery fires despite having gone through the previous recall problem uh, process, uh, which altered their software. Uh, now it's officially recalled these cars and will begin replacing battery modules due to what it says is a, quote, rare manufacturing defect. So GM says it will alert customers when the replacement parts are ready. For more information, you can go to www.chevy.com forward slash Bolt EV recall, or you can call 1-833-EV-CHEVY. <laughs> um, in the meantime, uh, owners are advised to set their bolts to a 90% state of charge maximum. Uh, avoid running your range below 70 miles remaining. Uh, park your Bolt EV outside, and of course, don't uh, charge your car unattended overnight. So, Kyle, is this going to bring down resale prices low enough so I can actually pick one up on the cheap? <laughs> or uh... no, I think I think it's such small and few cases in between right now. Like we don't know if the problem gets worse with age or better with age. I'll say I've spent plenty of time in Bolt, and while I have my own issues with it, it's never gotten to the point where I've started to burn at a medium rare. Uh, tendency here. So I would say I wouldn't worry about if I owned one, I would maybe not park it inside and I would, I would just drive it as is. And if it burns, let's go to court. Burn, baby. Um, all right. Well, yeah, maybe let more. it burn. Don't try to save it. Never save anything from burning. Let that sucker burn out. Yeah, <laughs> you don't yeah. want to deal with a half burnt car. That's not good. No, no, Same no. thing with crashing. If you're going to crash a car, <laughs> slam it into a wall totally <laughs> and then get a new one. Don't try uh, to deal with this whole body shop nonsense. That's bad move. And if uh, you uh, only crash it a little bit, really ding it. And you can, <laughs> then you don't have to deal with it. Quick or replace uh, it. Right. So, Advice from Kyle Clover. Inside so, EVs does not endorse insurance fraud. <laughs> I just want to make sure he understands this right now. <laughs> So it's not insurance fraud. It's don't, just don't, like don't ding your car more after the crash is over. Oh, uh, sure, that might be insurance fraud. Yeah, but uh, you know, just if you're going to crash it, make it a big one. Right. Hey, so maybe the more important question is: uh, Will this affect sales of the new Bolt EV and U EUV? I'm, like, I'm seeing lots, still seeing lots of happy no. customers in various EV, Bolt EV groups. So there's other things that will affect sales, like it doesn't charge very fast, right. and it's right. pretty ugly. That's subjective, but it's also yes. lo lower price than most of the alternatives, right? Uh, yeah. I just you, think step up to an ID four if you're looking in that well, you category. Can get a Leaf probably cheaper, but has child. Yeah, but that's worse than a Bolt. <laughs> um, the I don't know the Bolt. Honestly, I actually really enjoy driving the Bolt. I think they're super fun, really torquey, and uh, that that's the point I was trying to make was the Bolt is so good. It's truly, as long as you're not going on a long trip, don't let the fire thing deter you from getting one. Right. I mean, I, I would, I would get more. There's other things that, that the bolt can do to deter you from getting one on its own. If those don't deter you, then right. you're good. Also the new ones don't have this issue because they have the new batteries. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Of course. So no, no problem. And they look better, and they're super comfortable inside. And I don't think they look better. I think the old one looks the best. Oh yeah. And they're cheap. They're yeah. Cheaper as well. They are yeah. in terms of getting a new EV on your driveway. Yeah. Uh, you get a stellar deal. And if the tax credit ever came back, uh, then that would be a no-brainer. Oh, yeah, yeah, if the if you have a tax credit on top of that eight thousand dollar reduction in price or whatever that crazy move was, that would be the move. Also, I think you get EUV over EV because then you get Super Cruise if you get a nice one. Yeah, right. and, but then roof, you're roof got, getting Super Cruise for a road trip and it doesn't road trip that well. So our, you know, who know, what are we doing? I think you need to get um, EUV for a sunroof too or a moonroof depending on whether you drive it day or night. But yeah, anyway, I think you go base bolt EV. And specifically, look at used ones for sure. I think those are great new ones if you want it. The brake lights are silly, um, but you're driving the car. Right. And uh, like I said, make sure they rear end you really hard to total it. Uh, so, <laughs> okay. So there you go. All right. Um, let's okay. Move on real quickly because uh, last week we told you Rivian was looking for a, a location to build a second plant. Uh, this week, in the past week, in the past week, they've raised two point five billion dollars in a new round of investment, and we've learned that uh, this new factory, according to Reuters at least, will uh, will require an an investment of five billion dollars altogether, and it will eventually support uh, ten thousand plus jobs. Uh, there are also rumors that it would be built in Arizona, east of Mesa, though that's not confirmed. Uh, Rivian already has a small facility there, just uh, northeast of Phoenix, I believe. Um, I'm not sure what to make of this at all, but uh, I thought at the very least it would be a good, give us a good chance to play a clip that CEO RJ Scaringe shared on Twitter this week um, of the RS1 driving up. Uh, I don't know, Kyle, did you see this clip? What's the angle of that rock face? Uh, Martin, I don't know if you can dig that up. Yeah, yeah, no, this is cool. I've actually been there. Uh, okay. Truly impressive. Uh, this is, you know, a capability of of torque, power management, getting the power to the right wheels. You right. want to avoid wheel spin. You want to have it much, as much adhesion as possible. You right. need ground clearance. Not surprising that they're going to be able to do all this, and they are doing this. Um, you know, at the end of the day, this surface is fairly grippy. So this is looks really cool on paper. It shows you have a ton of low down torque. No yeah. question, uh, it's going to be awesome at this stuff. It does seem a bit big for this kind of real hardcore off roading that everyone's doing, uh, right. but I think that's perfect for overlanding. You know, in Moab, you don't actually have to travel that far away from downtown where there's 50 kilowatt or maybe 62 kilowatt DC fast chargers. The car itself looks awesome, no question. This is one going to be one of the most desirable vehicles on the market, no question, I think. Uh, everyone's just going to want to get one of these things. And especially out here in Colorado, if they build out the adventure network, if you can actually hit the trails uh, and if that somehow works, then this is going to be the choice. Hmm, I thought the I, I wanted to play the uh, actual video, but it's not in that post. Uh, one moment here and I can do this. Yeah, the video was cool. You could watch it have power management, you know, basically individual motors on each wheel saying, OK, back the power off there. Let's increase the power on a side that we think has more traction. I thought it was really neat. Here, take a watch. And sound on. Yep, so they're approaching the bottom right now. Right. Seriously steep incline. Power down. Look at that. Spinning that front wheel. You can see it's catching really nicely, but not limiting the acceleration. You can hear little squeaks out of the, out of the tire rubber. And yeah, that's not through the impressive. podcast, unfortunately. To watch the video, uh, it, you know, I would recommend audio listeners go and have a look because the pictures don't do it justice that we were showing either. It's I mean, that it's pretty steep. impressive, right? Right at the very bottom, that like first stretch, like it's, it's not straight up, but it's like <laughs> I can't imagine. I mean, you yeah. need a good approach and departure angle for sure, and that's why the bumper tapers up to more of a point at mm. the front, uh, so cool. they can get up on stuff like this. Awesome right. vehicle. Look, no question. Just can't wait till we get one. That's the thing. When are we going to be able to get one? Right. Delays, the delays, way. delays. So yeah. yeah, September is like the what the last delay. So that's that's only a month or so away. But you know, who knows? Will they delay again? We'll, we'll see. Yeah, but we I, just, I wanted to mention. I want to mention that that you know five billion five billion dollars for a factory, man. That's crazy. It's going to be huge though. That's on two thousand acres. Um, but man, five billion dollars. That's that's a crazy. Um, There's got to be better ways to spend your money, but what do I know? 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, but anyway, I, I wanted to bring that up just so I could play that video because it was yeah. so impressive. Again, uh, a lot of money, a lot of money to raise for a company that has not delivered a vehicle. I don't count the Amazon vans. They build them by hand. Right. Uh, Agreed. It's a huge amount of money uh, to be, uh, and the value of the company, uh, uh, even, be, you know, before an IPO based on delivering nothing. Been around 10 years, great people, amazing talent, delivered nothing. Mm-hmm. And That'll talking change. about the delays, my, my, my buddy, I mentioned on previous podcasts, he was expecting a June delivery. Uh, and uh, they e- just recently emailed them and said it's been pushed back to December. Wow. Wow. So that's six months. Yeah. That okay. Sucks. Um, so before we go, I did want to mention, so, oh, man, I wish we had more time for this. But so uh, this week, uh, an Audi po- set a record. Uh, it was an Audi e-tron Sportback. Yes. Pulling, pulling a trailer set a record uh well i mean there's not really a record to break but the, so uh so i don't know how the story pulled up but basically they've there's this company in the uk called uh do you, are you familiar with this the less how, how do you say it i would say the less okay it's, it's it's i think it, on page it looks like death less but i'd say right. the less um okay. but yeah a powered trailer or a powered right. caravan Right, so so the uh, it went 240 miles basically up 400 or 4,870 meters or 15 almost 16,000 feet in altitude, you know, uh, in in this in the Alps I believe they were at, um, and they yeah. used 62 kilowatt hours of energy, and the the trailer which has an 80 kilowatt hour battery used 74 kilowatt hours of that. Um, yeah, but they they had no problem going you know farther than the actual range of the uh, Audi's Audi e-tron Sportback up you know three or four miles in altitude over. Yeah, they went through the Alps. I think they end up at Lake Garda in the end in northern Italy. Right. Um, sorry, sorry. Watch. Uh, but uh, but yeah, the idea of putting batteries on trailers is something we talk about in theory. But this was announced a few years ago, and then they actually took it on a on a on a trip. And uh, yeah, I don't know what the size of the battery is. Whether it's you say seventy it's something kilowatt 80 hours, eighty kilowatt hours, eighty kilowatt hours is the pack yeah. in in there, yeah. which is great. So it, it 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 responds every tenth of a second. So whether you are accelerating, braking, or freewheeling, the trailer responds to what the tow vehicle is doing um and whether to apply power or whether and it regens as well which is cool and so, vectors. yeah so this is the answer to kyle's uh evs can't tow issue just put oh totally i towing. said this said this from the beginning it just means less weight you can carry in your trailer uh yeah, as well yeah. as how are you yeah. gonna pull up to a charger and plug both of these things in maybe <laughs> yeah, good that's, boy. you know that's a good right. idea but um look a lot a lot, lot more issues a lot more expense a lot more costs uh-huh. you know mm-hmm. you could just buy a cheap ice pickup truck to tow your trailer once in a while so uh but, <laughs> i don't know so the, so the advantage of this to me is that so you know, it's like like you say, it's like a huge upfront cost because that, that that's not going to be cheap. But you also get so that's basically a, a huge power wall, emergency backup system for your house when you're not pulling it as a trailer. You know, it's like a whole unit. I don't know, sure if they've uh, thought that part through as as much yet, but you know, that's definitely. Look, yeah, there's a lot of use here. cases for batteries, but you're going to need a lot of a lot of power outages to uh, justify that cost or uh, it, or you could or you know, selling uh, back to the grid when energy is expensive you know right, that whole right, thing right, right. um yeah, yeah look use. look i love that idea i'm all about it would i go right. for this personally yeah because i'm interested in the tech this is right up my alley it's everything i love uh you know i'm just trying to think for your average person <laughs> who's right. not just gonna waste money on things that are cool and shiny and interesting. It's going to be a hundred thousand dollars at least. It's a hundred thousand plus trailer minimum, minimum. Right. Yeah. And you know, trailers already 50 grand if you get a nice trailer. Right. Um, you know, so, so, you know, probably more than that. And then, yeah, not sure. Not anyway, sure. I just want to mention that cause it was pretty neat. And it's one of those things that, Oh, you know, we very cool. Here. I great wish we had test. more time to talk about it because I want to talk about it more, but we have to get going. Yeah. Great uh, test for sure. Really, really love that they did that. Right. And it's not for sale yet. Uh, they, no. they first showed it in like 2018. I, I wrote up the original article on that. So I was really excited when I saw, see it two two years later. It's actually, <laughs> you know, happening. But uh, anyway, so that brings us to the end of our show. 
Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them on the Inside EVs forum podcast thread or on our YouTube or Twitch comment sections. Uh, if you like the show, please, please, please give us a thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube or a rating if you're listening on another platform. Uh, don't forget, you can find and follow our panelists on Twitter. Tom Longley is at Tomalog. Martin Lee is at EV News Daily. Kyle Connor is at it's Kyle Connor, and I'm at Dominic underscore Y. Click subscribe and tap that bell icon for notifications, and we'll see you all again next week. Thank you.